figure out the technology up here, but um, basically our forward-looking statement. Uh, um, as, as you mentioned, I was the uh, vice president of uh, uh, Gamma Lake Resources, and uh, just a little history on how GoGold came about. Uh, we started a company called Gamma Lake Resources back in the 90s, um, took it on the uh, Toronto uh, Exchange and also the New York Stock Exchange. It still tr uh, trades on, on both of those exchanges under the name Orico. Uh, we took the company from basically Brad Langell's garage, you see a picture of Brad there, and uh, to a 2.2 billion market cap when we handed it off to another management group. And I think the market cap even today is still in, in the billion plus range, uh, even with the depressed uh, gold prices. Um, another company we developed was uh, Mex Gold. Um, again, uh, did it here in Nova Scotia. Um, both of those projects were, were based here in Nova Scotia. Uh, we bought a defunct mine, in, 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 or insolvent mine in Mexico for about $20 million. Um, and about three years later, we turned around and sold it for, and, and, and rehabilitated the mine and got it back up and running and, and sold it for about $375 million. Um, so it was quite a successful uh, endeavor for our, our shareholders. Another one was Nayarit. Brad was the, the strategic advisor for Nayarit, and I was basically just a shareholder. Um, we uh, bought the project from another, or I guess took it over from another management group. Um, turned it around and sold it, basically doubled the, the value of the company over the next uh, couple of years. And uh, that brings us to GoGold. So GoGold, I started, uh, I was a VP of, uh, as, as mentioned earlier, of uh, Acadian Mining. And while I was at Acadian, um, we had some issues obviously with our lead zinc mine here, as everybody knows. So I, I decided to, to branch out and, and, and do one myself. So I, I raised about $6 million, put it into a shell company, a CPC company on the venture exchange. And uh, talked to Brad and Fred and said, look, Brad and Fred, you have these two great projects and I'd really like to get my hands on them in Mexico. So it kind of put the team back together. So Brad and Fred and I uh, developed both Gammon and Mexgold, and uh, now we're here with, at GoGold. So we've got a, a company right now of, uh, which we own about, actually after yesterday, about 40% of the company in uh, management and, um, and key shareholders. So uh, we're big stakeholders in the company and, and, and we really uh, enjoy what we're doing. So. Um, Right now, the, the uh, basic in, and uh, the number of shares is about 147 million. We have cash available, which includes receivables of about 8 million. I don't know if you saw the press release yesterday on the company, but uh, we, we just did a bought deal yesterday for $20 million, and that should close in about two or three weeks. So uh, we've got lots of cash available. We're, we're in production, and then I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, we have reserves on our, on our what's called our uh, tailings, Prell tailings project of about three, 35 million ounces of silver. and um, if you look at a gold equivalent basis, it's about 700,000 ounces. We just picked up, a, a bought a product actually this year. We should be in production on it next year is the plan. And um, I'll show you why that's going to be so quick to put into production and, and uh, in, a, in a second. But uh, it has M&I ounces, measured and indicated ounces of about 800,000 ounces and 255,000 ounces inferred. So uh, basically a million ounce resource. I'm not allowed to add them together. I didn't say that, did I? But uh, anyway, uh, and, and another 700,000 ounces. So our goal is to be about a 1.5 million to 2 million reserve company over the next two years. And I'll show you how we're going to do it. So just to step back a little bit, uh, Cormark Securities um, out of Toronto uh, just put this out a few weeks ago, or a month ago now, I guess, or two, uh, back in September. And we had a target price on the company of about 240. Today we traded about a dollar 50, I think, uh, um, at last I looked. Um, just to give you an idea that the people are starting to recognize this company as, as one of the, the, I think, the premier uh, trading companies out there in Canada as a mining company. And, and um, as other people's stock has uh, decreased over, uh, say, the last year. Um, this time last year, we were about a dollar, and uh, we're about a dollar fifty. We're a dollar seventy just just uh, a few weeks ago. So we've we've actually increased uh, when others are are, are dropping. Uh, uh, PI uh, Pacific International has put out uh, coverage on us too, suggesting a price of around two twenty five. Just to give you an idea, well, who's looking at us? And and this coverage has just been initiated recently, even with the low gold prices. So. Our first project, the Perel Tailings project, it's, it, if you notice the, 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 um, the picture here, uh, the tailings are actually being surrounded by the town of Perel, and uh, the town invited us in to have a look and, and say, look, look at these tailings, see what you can do with them. They're, they're, they're an environmental nightmare for us. That some of them are over 300 years old. The town's been growing up around them. Uh, the wind blows the sand through the town uh, uh, through these heavy, dry seasons. And uh, so Brad went down and had a look and realized that the, the stuff ran about a gram equivalent of uh, gold. And uh, then the next issue was, okay, metallurgy and looking at how to process these things. So 
Brad had the bright idea to say, hey, let's see if we can heat bleach them. So uh, we did a bunch of columns, and uh, lo and behold, we found out that, uh, that they heat bleach very well. Um, we've got, uh, just to give you show, show you exactly what we're doing, um, we're moving those tailings about nine kilometers, well, it's nine kilometers as the crow flies, about 12 or so 14 kilometers away. So we're, we're actually uh, remediating the, the site and moving it to a 21st century pad, which is lined with clay and, and rubber, which will last the next 100, 150 years. So it's a win-win for us. Uh, the cities are a partner on this. They get about a 12% uh, net profit interest in, in what we make. And, they, they, right, and even with today's silver prices, they're probably going to make about $20 million over the life of mine. So it's, it's, it's a nice win-win uh, for, for the city and, and also us. So it's real simple. Simple excavation. You basically just shovel the sand, put it in a truck, and drive it over to the other site. You treat it by cyanide agglomerated heap leach. Um, we're going to do about 5,000 tons a day. Uh, back end recovery is Merrill Kroll, and I'll, I'll show you that in a second. And uh, real, we have grid power, we have our own wells that we drilled, so it's, it's a real simple, simple project. And uh, life of mine right now recovery is about 58% for uh, silver and about 65% for gold. Here's uh, some pictures and just kind of to show you which way it, it, it flows here. Uh, um, basically shovel it into the top of the, uh, or the back of the truck. Uh, we load it onto the uh, a loader into the agglomeration drum, and the agglomeration drum basically mixes sand and cement together, and then it goes along this uh, conveyor belt, which well, actually most of this area is full now. This was an early pitcher, uh, and um, drops it onto the heap leach, and then we, we, we spread cyanide uh, drip lines over top of it, collect it in these rubber padded uh, drains, and then it goes through what's called a Merrill Crow plant, and, and it's very simple. You just uh, basically removing the gold and silver from the solution. And then, then what solution is left over is actually pumped back out onto the site. So there's no um, admission or anything into the environment. It's all recycled and continues to recycle because we don't want to put it out in the environment because it still has gold and silver in it and we want to recover it. So um, some of the cyanide gets evaporated in the process. So it, a cyanide evaporates very quickly. So we, we, we keep adding cyanide to keep the level up, but uh, as, it, as it keeps flowing through, we just keep removing the gold and silver. And right now, the goal is to get about 25, um, or 250 uh, um, cubic meters uh, an hour, and that'll give us about uh, 200,000 ounces of silver a month. And uh, our goal is to get up to, and, and about, I think, 150 ounces of gold. So the goal is to get to about uh, 3 million ounces of silver production equivalent over the next three years, and, and we're already, on track this month, probably do about 100,000 ounces of silver, and we should be pretty close to 200,000 ounces over the next uh, month, month and a half. Oh, wrong button. So, um, we, we told people, uh, probably maybe even uh, last year or the year before, in some of these things, we, we were going to build this thing for $35 million, but we actually built it for $32.5 million, so we we're well under budget, and, uh, and uh, we... we uh, in the mining industry these days, a lot of these companies out there are building projects and, and they're, you know, billions of dollars over budget and, and uh, we actually did what we said we were going to do. The other uh, thing, um, pre-feasibility study had cash costs of about uh, $14 and uh, when we knew going into this that the grade was a little bit higher and I can explain that later, but um, so we're actually getting costs right now and I'll show you a chart in a little while. We're right in around the $6.45 announced costs uh, on, on production of, of silver. So all in sustaining costs, you probably heard it in the last talk, uh, we're about $9 or under um, company-wide for, for silver an ounce. And silver today, I think, is trading around $15, $50, or $16. So uh, we're, even at this silver price, uh, we're, we're, we're going to make a lot of money on, on this project. Uh, we uh, did our first pour in June of last year, or this year, sorry. Uh, we started construction last October. Uh, it took us seven months to build it, and we, and we told people seven months, and they told us we were crazy. We said, no, it's a pretty simple thing to do, and, and we did it. Um, if you look at the fellow on the, uh, I guess your far uh, left on your side, um, that's uh, Bob Harris from Nova Scotia. He's the uh, CEO of the company, and he's, uh, he's uh, engineered this project. He did an excellent job. Um, you'll probably see Brad Langell in, in the picture also there. Uh, he's uh, second from the right. Um, our first pour in, in June... Uh, and, and I'll show you the numbers here in a second. We, uh, we, um, these are the key performance indicators just over the last three months, and I don't know if you can see the numbers there or not, 
but the ones in yellow are the, are the main ones, and that's our cash cost per silver ounce equivalent. And over the last three months, even through commissioning, we've been, we've been actually turning a profit in August and September, even at these silver prices. So uh, when we all know that silver is going to go back up, right? Everybody's going to guess that, I think, and hoping. But, uh, you know, we get into the 20 and $25 silver uh, price, and, and this mine's going to kick out about 25 to $30 million of free cash flow a year. Um, and even at these prices, we're looking at probably 15 to 20. So it's, it's a very profitable mine. Um, and if you look at the realized silver prices there, which is just under the yellow numbers, uh, um, even in September, we only rec uh, realized 1673 an ounce silver, and we still made a, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars kind of thing. So um, when we get into full production, um, and you're only seeing 50, I think 51,000 ounces there, uh, full production a month is going to be about 200,000. So the actual costs don't go up a whole lot, it's just the, just the, uh, the number of ounces. So we, we're, we're going to do quite well here, I think. Um, so to recap, Perel is our first mine. It's up and running. We built it in seven months. Uh, we said we were going to do it. We were under budget. It, it's performing very well. We're ramping up. We just went through the, probably the worst rainy season of Mexico history in the last probably five or six years during commissioning, and we're still managing to, to pump the ounces out. Uh, even in October, it never rains in October, we had six major rain events in October, and our October isn't going to be that great but we still did pretty good. So uh, we don't have those numbers out yet, but they're coming soon. Um, so that thing is gonna kick out a lot of free cash flow when we're in full production at 5,000 tons a day. Our goal is to get it to 10,000 tons a day next year. And um, we're, we're, it's about a three to $4 million uh, capital expense build. Uh, we engineered it all in to go to 10,000 tons. So we should be able to pump about 20 or $40 million free cash flow a year out of Perel. That brings us to our second project. We just bought this project. It's called uh, uh, Santa Gratuitous. If you see on the map there, it's the one on the top. Uh, Perel, the one I was talking about earlier, is in Chihuahua. It's in the middle of the map. We also have another project. It's our exploration project, and it's San Diego, and I'll talk about that briefly in a, in a few minutes. So uh, Santa Gratuitous project, I looked at it, um, and it's kind of funny because I was, I was looking at evaluating a few hundred different projects looking for the next mine to build. Uh, I looked at it and I said, ah, I don't like it, and I uh, put it aside. And my geologist in Mexico called and said, uh, you know what, I'm going to go over and have a look at it anyway. It's, it's near where I'm going. And, and uh, uh, a few days later, he called me up and said, you're crazy. This thing's the best thing I've ever seen. Uh, I said, okay. Well, I said, well, I'm just looking at it on paper. I'm not looking at it on, on site. And, and uh, he realized uh, the potential there, and, and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, it's a past producer. It did about uh, 500,000 ounces at two, two grams per ton, which is super high grade, really, for, for Mexico. And uh, there was about 600,000 ounces of re reserve or quasi-reserve resources still left ready to mine and when the mine shut down. It shut down in 2000 when the price of gold hit 300, and um, the company Campbell Resources had it at the time. They uh, had a big problem with the mine in, in Quebec. They had a flood. The company went bankrupt, and, and, and uh, so uh, the uh, creditors sold off the projects and uh, the equipment, and it sat idle until about 95, or sorry, 2005. And another company called Animus Resources went in. They had Phillips Dodge uh, directors that worked on the project before and said, look, we should get this for the company. They bought it. They spent about $10 million in, in exploration looking for Molly because Molly was the flavor of the day back then. Um, blew their brains out, didn't, and their stock went from $1.35 down to $0.03. Cents. The project was trading for about, uh, um, I think, $0.03 cents at the time, uh, $1.5 million market cap. We made an offer of $3 million. They accepted it. Uh, then all of a sudden, another company came in, and, and in our agreement, we had a right to match. They said they'll pay five, uh, then we matched it, and then they said they were going to pay seven, and then a third company came in and said they were going to pay 16 uh, um, million, and um, we convinced the, the key shareholders to, that, that we were the group to, to go with, and, and they were convinced, and, and it was actually Christmas Eve. We signed the deal for 11 million. We bought this mine for 11 million dollars, and I'll show you what we got. Um, right now, um, the last resource we put out in September, we have 800,000 ounces. I mentioned it before, of a measure and indicated in 255,000. So almost a, well, over a million ounces of resource we bought for uh, $11 million. Um, what's nice about this project, um, we did a PEA in September. And production, we're, we're looking at about 56,000 ounces a year, uh, 232 million after tax uh, cash flow. So we paid $11 million, and this thing's going to kick out $232 million. And that was at $12 or $1,250 gold. Even at $1,000 gold, if you look at the bottom of the, 
the, um, the chart there, uh, this still has an internal rate of return of 34% even at $1,000 gold, so it's, it's got a really robust economics. So uh, for, I, think we, and, and I think Cormark said it was the deal of the year, and I, I'm, I'm still convinced that there's no other project out there as nice as this. Right now, the resource sits at a million ounces. I'm convinced that we'll have two million ounces there over the next uh, three to four years. It, there's lots of exploration upside, and I'm going to show you that in a second, too. Um, I'm going to start moving along a little quicker. I see the clock's running down. So um, it's got a proven mine model because we've got the history there. It was a four-inch crush, uh, heap leach, 75% uh, um, recovery, over t uh, two grams recovered. So we've got the history of, of, of the mining model. We already know the metallurgy. It, it, it's, been a, it's an easy um, re restart on, on that side of things. Uh, we have land agreements in place. Uh, there's... Um, we're just a, we're just reestablishing production on this project. So, what we're doing is we're going in. It's already got water established. Uh, a lot of the buildings are there, and I'll show you those pictures in a second. Um, power is just a simple generation power. It's a very very simple simple heap leach project. It's going to be about uh, thirty two million dollars to build it, but it's um, five million uh, contingency in there, and also about uh, uh, f I think a three or four million dollar um, pushback on some of the things. So it's really about $20 million to put this thing back into production, which is very, very low cost in, in, in the mining industry today. Um, right now, we're doing the final engineering on the first four pits, and I'll show you those. I'm going to move along, like I said, a little quicker. Um, those first four pits generate the first four, four to five years of production. Um, if you look at the one at the bottom called Christina, it's the lowest grade one on the project. It's 0.7 grams. Uh, the Dora pits, a couple of grams. The Coral pits, uh, um, two grams. So we're going to actually blend them all and, and feed to a central uh, mill. What's nice about the Christina project is that it's, uh, it's a one-to-one -one strip ratio. The overall strip ratio for the whole project is about uh, five to one. Uh, but because it's one-to-one, -one, it's easy to start. We're going to be moving ore the day we start stripping. So, um, and that's the project that we hope uh, we'll be putting on the pads by September next year is the plan. So uh, just to give you a, a, like a cross section there, you'll see that it's actually on surface and, and, uh, and most of it's ore. So it's a, it's a nice, nice, way, nice place to start. Um, here's the facilities, core shacks are there. The buildings are all there. Uh, they see the water tower on the, on the, on the right-hand side picture. That water tower is, is uh, charged with water. The fire hydrants are there and actually working. So we've, we're, we're basically reestablishing production. We're not, we're not going in and, and having to start from scratch. And that's why we think we can build it in, in a year or less than a year. Uh, here's just a picture of some of the geos and some of the existing pits that are there now. Um, oh, let me go back uh, for a second. Uh, the big guy in the green, on the, uh, that's uh, Dave Duncan, also from Nova Scotia, just to let you know, he's actually running the, uh, the, the exploration project down there, so he's a, he's a good guy, he loves it down there. So what's interesting about this project, it had 2,400 drill holes, uh, 250,000 meters of drilling, uh, 200,000 meters of blast holes, um, a resource already existed on the project of over 500,000 ounces. Um, just a, a huge amount of data. It's about $100 million worth of work spent on this project and, and, and uh, over the years by Phelps Dodge and Campbell Resources and Anonymous. And uh, again, we picked it up for about $11 million, so it's, it's, I think it's a pretty, pretty great, uh, great uh, catch. N number of pits on the project. Uh, um, all of them have uh, nice resources uh, outlined on them already, a lot of drill holes that have never been looked on before. Um, I won't talk too much about this, but we've, we've come up with a, a, a new model on the project. We uh, Structurally, uh, this thing is, uh, has changed in, in dimensions just from our, mo it was never modeled before in, in computers. It was always done by, on paper by hand, and, and we re-digitized re everything and realized that there's a big high-grade structures running through these pits. and. So we're drilling it actually in a different direction than, than what was previously thought. Um, the upside potential along uh, some of the different faults, to give you an idea, that Dora pit that I talked about before on Christina, there's a place called Silicosis. I don't know, we've got to change the name, I think, but it's not a great name. But, but um, all kinds of geochemistry work, all kinds of geophysical work, um, um, great anomaly. We're getting trenching numbers that are, that are just like Christina and it's never been drilled before on the project. So there's lots of upside for ounces. That's why we think we can double the, the number of ounces. Um, here's some of the recent drilling that we did. Uh, actually, pretty phenomenal numbers in Mexico. These are high-grade numbers, 21 meters of 2 grams. You know, you got 48 meters of a gram, almost a gram gold, and 45 grams of silver. And these, these were based on the new model that we, we, we've um, uh, determined on the project. So that some of these are actually new discoveries uh, that, that had, had never been looked at before. So we've got lots of upside. Um, so, so Perel in production, commercial production in the next month or so. 
Um, Santa Gratuita should be up and running next year. Uh, commercial production sometime early 16. The goal is to produce about 130,000 ounces from those two projects a year, gold equivalent, and our all-in sustaining costs from both projects will be under $700 gold, which is probably some of the lowest in the industry out there. And if you look at, at um, Perel, it's probably the lowest uh, all-in sustaining cost and, and cash costs in silver in, in Mexico for sure, and, and maybe, you know, majority of the world, I think. Uh, so there, so what our, our game plan was look for projects that are low-cost entry point, low-cost ounces, and I think the market today, uh, you know, if you look at the market, all these mining companies, the larger ones in particular, went out looking for these big deposits just to add as many ounces as they possibly could, whether they made money or not, because the gold price was always going to go up. And uh, as we know, it didn't happen. So we've got Barrick out there, we've got gold fields, we've got all, you know, all these Yamana, they're all in serious trouble. Um, they're writing off these ounces right now. They're writing off uh, and, and cutting as much of, of uh, they can to, to continue in this in this industry. Uh, and our goal, right from you know two and a half years ago, we saw the trend and we had this exploration project. And I'll show you quickly in a second. I think I only have a few seconds left. Um, some of the best results of my life. Uh, uh, 194 meters of 1.1 copper, 87 gram silver, 0.3 gold. Best drill hole I've ever drilled. And the market just went, yeah. I'll, Great, <laughs> you know, um, it was uh, it was kind of disappointing. I think our stock went up two cents that day. Um, Los Europas, we had seven meters of a, of a kilo of silver, pretty well, and and, and nobody cared. So exploration has gone by the wayside. It's it's a difficult industry right now, as we know, and uh, it's tough to uh, to promote exploration. And, and you've probably seen that here in Nova Scotia. So our our focus is is production, production, production. Get them up and running, and eventually. Um, this project probably has a few million ounces on it, but uh, like I say, nobody nobody t gives you any kind of credit for that in, in this market, and, and uh, even even Mexico. Uh, um, if you look at our grade, the two yellow ones at the end here, uh, you know, uh, Perel and Sandy and Santa Gratuas, our grade is uh, these are all the other open pit uh, heap leach projects in Mexico and in, in the north, and the average grade there's about 0.7. Both of ours are over a gram, so we, we've got two of the highest grade deposits in Mexico, and and uh, a lot of people are starting to take interest. Um, just I'm going to end here soon because I think I'm over over now. But uh, the um, what we said we were going to do over the last uh, year, from 2014 to 2015, we pretty well met all of our targets, and we're pretty sure that we'll be uh, starting construction next year and putting uh, Santa Gratuitas in production. And um, the company, with both projects up and running in 2016, should generate in the $50 million free cash flow a year, which is. Uh, uh, we're getting a lot of mid-tier companies coming and saying, hey, you know, we're not making any money right now, and, and $50 million a year is going to add, add a lot to our, our, uh, our, our books, so uh, you know, let's come down and have a look. But we're not really interested in selling at the moment, but uh, obviously if someone comes in and, and, and looks at us and says, hey, you know, here's an offer that we can't refuse, obviously we're going to look at it. But our goal is to build the next mid-tier like we've, all, we've done before with Gammon and uh, um, see what happens along the way. So... If you have any questions at all, I don't know if I have any time left, but uh, um, thank you very much, and, and uh, please uh, come up and, and see me if you have any questions. Thanks.